So, Lex D, forget about Kubernetes, forget about Docker. This is the new stuff right now. Lex D is simply a container management or manager system that lets you run containers on your local laptop without really worrying about stuff like Linkerd or setting up a mesh network or DNS troubles or all the things that comes with some of the other container orchestration stuff. So just to show you how easy it is to use, we're going to set up a WordPress container on a Debian VM and we're just going to see how it works out. I think, it, I think it's uh, kind of a good experience um, to do so. So right here is my Debian 10 uh, installation. It's running in a VM. It's got four gigs of RAM and it's got, I think I've given it four virtual cores, which should be more than enough. Um, yeah, three, four cores. And uh, we've also got here got uh, two hard drives, dev SDA is root and dev SDB is the hard drive we're going to be using for storage pools later. So once you're up to date and have a recent installation, let's just go ahead and install snapd. Now snapd is the package manager that houses the LexD repository. So make myself smaller. It doesn't house, house the LexD repository, it houses the LexD package. So that should install pretty quickly. Um, and now you can call snap just by doing sudo snap and then sudo snap install lexd. Now this is going to take a little bit of time. So while we're doing that, let's talk about how we're going to set up the infrastructure. So we begin by showing our host. So we have Debian 10 is the host here. In fact, I'll put host here to make it clearer. And inside of that is going to be the um, LexD, you know, platform that controls everything. And inside of here, we're going to have, um, we're going to make three containers in one volume, and I'll show you why. So Nginx is going to be the reverse proxy that's going to have the port forward in between the host and the containers and the container bridge. We're going to have Apache, which is going to be um, serving the, the WordPress uh, volume using PHP, and we're going to have MariaDB, which is going to house all of our database stuff. So I think I want to say it's container. We'll just clarify that. Container, container. Yep. Perfect. And then if I can drag these here, we'll also have a volume. And this is just to really show the flexibility of LexD. It's not meant to be a perfect setup or a super secure one. It's just meant to give an example of using it in a in a somewhat real setting. Okay, so drinking Costa, by the way. So that's nearly done. Um, what else can we call out here? Let's uh, kind of diagram how it's going to work here. So we're going to have Nginx is going to forward to Apache, and uh, there's going to be a connection between MariaDB and this one, and uh, WordPress. Now there's not going to be a um, isolated connection between MariaDB and Apache, because they'll all be running on the same bridge, so they can talk to each other, but we're only going to reference MariaDB in the Apache container config. And the volume will be mounted um, on in a path inside Apache. Okay, so SnapD is installed. Before you jump into it, you want to make sure you're part of the new groups that are created. So we look at my groups now, standard groups that you get in any sort of graphical installation, but we want to add um, the new group here. So add LexD to GIF, and uh, we don't need sudo, we could just do new group LexD. And if you look at my groups now, you'll see LexD is added to it. And I think for Debian, they have this extra bit here that might help you to get snap in your path if you haven't already. I had it in my path, but just in case if you don't, you can source this. Now we can open up screen. So let's um, mark a couple more parts on this diagram here. So if we look at our interfaces, we have loopback and we have an ethernet. And if we look at the addresses here, we can record that the host address 
is 80, like that. Oops. And that is on ENS33. So that's just letting us know how to get connected to it. Um, all right. So we've got everything set up. Now what we want to do is configure the storage pool. Now your storage pool is going to house all of your container volumes and any other volumes that you add. Um, it's very useful to have this because you can uh, replicate it across different machines or different container hosts. So if we start by partitioning the second hard disk I showed you earlier, so dev stb, it's a 20 gigabyte hard disk, there's nothing set up there, so we can partition it as so, create a new GBT label, new partition with all defaults, and then write it. And then we can do makefs.btrf, butterfs, dev stb1. By the way, if you don't have the net, if it doesn't work, you can install butterfs progs, and that should give you the required tools. So that's installed, great. Um, and we want to set up the, uh, so there's two more things we need to set up now. One is we use the lexc invocation to, it's like a client uh, tool that lets you talk to lexd. We use a lexc invocation to query our profile. So every new installation gets a default profile. And because we don't want to be too complicated, we'll just use that. So there's two things we need to add for a brand new container that will be the standard for any created one. One is a, a connection to the host via a virtual ethernet. So we can create a bridge and all new containers will have networking. And second is a root disk, which we'll create and uh, use as part of the ButterFS storage pool. So let's begin by adding a network. So by the way, if you don't know um, what to type, after that, you can just press enter and it'll show you the commands along with maybe a, a, an example. So LXC network create, and this is gonna create the bridge. So if you have a look at IP address now, you'll see we've got a bridge with DHCP running on it. Um, that's gonna be very helpful. And that means that all new containers will get an IP address given to them by LexD. Um, so we can say here that we have 24, 24, this is the ethernet bridge like that. Okay. Actually I'll put it inside here because all containers will go through that to reach the host. Okay. So we have that. Now what we want to do is define it as part of our default profile. So if we look again at our profile, we have that. You can do LXC profile show default. It will tell you it's an empty config. So if we write LXC network, which will talk about the network we just made, LXC network, attach profile, the bridge we just created, attach it to the default profile, and then define it as ethernet zero. So that means that inside the containers, they'll see this attached network device as ethernet zero. So if we look at the profile again now, we can see that we have a bridged NIC or network interface card connected to the default profile. That's great. Next up, we wanna set up storage. So if we look at what we created earlier, we should have a partitioned hard disk now we want to mount that in the Lex D storage pools. So because we're using Snap, and I'll do sudo here, because we're using Snap, they're going to be hosted at var Snap. So var Snap, we see Lex D in there, go inside. It's going to be the common directory. And then if we look at Lex D after that, here's all these files, all these directories. Now this isn't created until you issue the first command. So if you jump straight to this directory after installing LexD, it's not gonna be there. So now we want to create a mount in storage pools. There's nothing there now. So we can just issue mount dev stb1 in that address. 
and we're going to call it lexdpool. Ah, we need to make the directory first. Do that as sudo, and then mount it there. And because I'm lazy, I'm going to take what's mounted right now and put it in my fstab so it mounts on boot. Great. So we want to let LexD know about this and then we're going to add it to our default profile. So we use the lex storage subcommand. So lexy storage create pool type is butterfs of course and source is the directory we were using before. So bar snap lexd common lexd storage pools lexd pool. So it's been created and now again if we look at our profile we have the ethernet and we're going to add add to that a device called root. It's going to be of type disk. The path on the containers is going to be mounted at the root path and the pool is going to be lexd pool. Okay, so if we look at the profile again, we'll see we've got a root a device called root that is a type disk and the ethernet zero. All right, so this is putting us in a good place to get started and begin pulling in the container images. Now, I just want to call out something first. If you do sudo lexd init, it will help you do It will help you to set all these things up, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I think it's good to run through what this is doing so you get an idea of uh, some of the behind the scenes work. Okay, so to pull in the images, we'll do lexc init. Images means we're accessing the images repository. I think it's available at images.linuxcontainers.org and we're gonna use Debian or Debian version 10. AMD64, and we're going to call this Nginx. And this is going to pull in the Nginx image. It should be pretty fast as the root FS is quite small. And it's created. And this, because it's already pulled, it's very quickly to create new ones. So we can create Apache. And MariaDB right now, it's very quick. And if you do LXC LS, it will tell you what your containers are. Now you see they're all stopped. They have no um, internet because we haven't started them. So LXC start Nginx. And if you look at that again, you'll see they're bounded with the device name we, we named on both IPv6 and 4. And this is the IP address. So I think we should be able to ping it. Yep, we can ping. And uh, let's see if we can access it. Um, yeah, so we won't be able to access it from the device I'm recording on because it's not been port forwarded. Cool, so we have Nginx set up. Let's go ahead and install Nginx inside this container. Now there's two ways to do this. You can do LXE exec, name of container, and then bin bash. Some people do that and then they're logged in. I prefer to see the containers to execute commands remotely in them as opposed to logging in to them and executing the commands locally. So I do LXC apt update, make everything, make sure everything's up to date. And then we'll do a special command file, edit, nginx, etc, apt sources.list. And so what this will do is op pull this file from the container, put it in a temp directory, open it with the default editor and then put it back once we're done. So what we're doing now is adding the nginx repository to our sources.list because the one that ships with Debian 10 does not have the proxy protocol enabled. And we will need that later as you, as you will see later. So HTTP nginx.org packages Debian and then buster nginx copy that, paste it again, and add source. Now the first time you pull this in, you're going to have an issue because these need to be signed and we don't have this key. So if we install 
GNU PG. We can pull the key from a key server. In this case, we'll use Ubuntu and then um, include it. So let's get the key. Where's the key? This is the key here. Copy that and we'll do. So we'll use a kind of complicated command. Key server, key server dot ubuntu dot com and receive keys. The one that was that it told us was missing. So we have it, and now if we do apt update again, you see that it's pulled in fourth and fifth sources. Cool. So now we're ready. We can install nginx. Installed, very easy, and we'll set it up to start at boot with system control enable nginx, and let's start it very quick. So if we curl that address again, so if we do uh, lxcls, we see it's running here, so curl that, nginx is running. In a different screen window, I'm gonna do something, gonna do a poor man's login execution or login framework. So if we do tail fr log nginx access.log and also tail error.log. So you see that curl we just did showed up there perfectly. But the problem is we're only accessing it from internally, what we want to do is also access it externally. So we can do that by adding a proxy device. So if we look at the configuration for Nginx, it's empty. So what we want to do is add a device. And if you don't know the commands, you can do that. Add a device to the Nginx container, call it HTTP. You can call it whatever you want, but it's of type proxy. And you have to define two key pair parameters. One is listen, which is where on which interfaces we'll listen for connections to send to the container. In this case, I want to listen to it, listen to connections on all interfaces on port 80 and connect it to the container at the local host on port 80, like so. Now it's created. So if we bring up the logs again, open up a private tab here and get the address. Oh, I already have the address here. So get the address of the container host and go there. You'll see that Nginx works. Great. But the problem is because we did port forward in, the container thinks the request came internally on localhost. And that's going to be an issue when you're trying to debug problems in logs because you're not going to know where it's coming from. So this is where the proxy protocol comes in. So if we go back to LXC config device show nginx, we have this set up and we want to add one more parameter to it. So LXC config device set nginx proxy protocol equals true. Yeah, we have to do HTTP. So now that's set, but unless we tell Nginx we did this, it's going to be a problem, right? You can see the actual address that we did the call from, but it's not ready to accept that. So if we go back to here and just edit the Nginx config, Um, I don't remember the, the address, so let's do a ls. Okay. So file edit nginx etc nginx config dot d, and I think it's default dot config. That's correct, you're right. So this is the default one. It's listen in port eighty. Now, if we add proxy protocol there and just right quit, go back to this, refresh, you'll see 
it's working now. Oh, we have to restart Nginx. Always remember to restart Nginx. Okay, so go back to the logs. You'll see it's now working, but we need to also tell Nginx where or that we should set the logs using the proxy protocol. So if we go here, we just have to add a couple lines here. So we say real IP header proxy protocol and also set that any in com any uh, requests coming from internally like the because we're port forward in we'll trust the header that's set so restart nginx oops might have made a mistake oh by the way if you want to check what mistake you made just type nginx nginx t and it'll tell you so unexpected close and brace that means we didn't add the semicolon after the options. Okay, so restart now and it should be fine. Perfect. So refresh this, it's working. Looking at the logs, the address has passed through. So Nginx is pretty much ready to go, or ready to set up for forwarding. So let's leave that alone for now. And let's go and set up Apache. So set up Apache is kind of the same, so we'll start the Apache container. Okay, that's started. And we'll just execute a command in there, apt install Apache 2. Yep. So this should be pretty quick. And so far, what we've configured is Nginx. So Nginx is ready. We're going to set up Apache next, and then we'll do the database and the WordPress volume. So Apache set up. Let's enable it to run every time the container starts. And let's start it. And if we look at our containers again, and do curl Apache's address, we get Apache 2, Debian default page, it works. Fantastic. So Apache's working. Now what we want to do is forward the connections to Nginx and ask Nginx to forward it to Apache. So there's two things we need to do here. One is we need to set up proxy pass in the Nginx config. So we've got listening and proxy protocol, server name, don't really need to change it right now. All we need to do is in the location, so get rid of load in the Nginx page. So we'll do proxy pass. And here's where it gets interesting, is because we're running in LexD, the host name that we set for the container is accessible because the DHCP server is running on the bridge. So it should just pass direct to Apache now. But let's set a couple more headers because we want the Apache logs to match the Nginx logs. So X real IP, this is the custom header we're going to be setting and it's going to be the remote address from the proxy protocol. So restart Nginx. Oh, we've made a mistake. Let's have a look what it is. We didn't put semicolons. Don't forget your semicolons. Restart. All right. So now that should be forwarding correctly. It is. Refreshed work fine. But if we open up a new tab here, and I'll just name this one Nginx so people know. If we do the same thing again. Okay, so we do Apache tail follow var log Apache 2 access.log and var log Apache 2 error.log. Okay, so refresh this page again. We can see that the 
the logged IP address is of the Nginx container. Now we don't want that because that's going to make it a bit difficult to when you pair the logs together, it's going to be difficult to see what's going on. So let's edit the Apache config and make a couple changes here. So in the Apache config, we're going to go straight to the log format and change from host to this, which is the past address. So just change, I'll undo that. So just change these two H's. To A's and write that. Okay. Next, we'll need to change the actual site. So if we do, if you don't remember where it's stored, we can do this ls etc Apache 2 sites available. So it's triple zero default. So lxc file edit Apache etc Apache 2 sites available and 000 default dot config. One thing to call out here is that if you actually go to the sites enable directory and try to edit it using LXC, it doesn't work very well with sim links, so it's best to just edit the hard the original file. So here you can see we have a virtual host. So inside here we want to do a couple things. One is we want to have the remote IP header be from xreal IP, the thing we set in Nginx, and we want to trust. Trust Nginx as well. So that should be fine. Um, and we want to enable the remote. Yep, yep, A2N mod remote IP. I think I spelled something wrong. No, that's fine. Let's see if we can restart. Restart looked fine. So let's refresh this. That's working. And if you look at the IP, it's passing through correctly. And if you look at Nginx, it's also passing through correctly. So this is good. That means our logs are going to be consistent. So we've set up Nginx, we've set up Apache. Now let's set up MariaDB. So let's start the container, LXC start, MariaDB. Pretty quick, LXC exec, MariaDB, apt install. Um, Maria DB, I think it's server. Now, if you haven't heard of Maria DB, it's a forked version of MySQL. This should be a pretty quick installation as well. So we have MySQL now. Let's uh, run the famous MySQL install in secure installation. This will just make sure that this is what you should run in production servers to make sure things, some of the defaults aren't going to cause you problems. So there's no password for root. Um, I'm not even going to set, oh, I'll set a root password. I'll just use a simple password here. Remove anonymous users, remove remote root login, get rid of test tables, and we're done. And if we look at the status, everything's looking good. So uh, now what we need to do is, is a couple of things. So by default, the configuration, at least in Debian, of MariaDB is it only connects, allows connections via localhost, and we want it to allow connections via the virtual ethernet that the container has. So we need to edit the config file to do that. So if we do, um, I don't remember what file it's in, but the command parameter is called bind address. So if we look in MySQL, I don't know what file it's in, so we can do grep rnw etc mysql, and then we give it the search term. Okay, so it's in the in this file here. So lxc file edit MariaDB 
in the DB there. Okay, and look for bind address. It's right here. You see it's on localhost. Let's just set that to everything. And I think that's the only change we need to do. So now we restart. Restart MariaDB. Let's check the status. No problems. Awesome. So we've got the container set up for Nginx, Apache, and MariaDB. So now we need to hook it all together with all the WordPress specific parameters. So we're going to do quite a few edits for WordPress. The first thing we're going to do is set up the storage volume. Now, why do we separate that from the Apache container? Well, perhaps you want to um, make changes to Apache independently of WordPress. So you can do snapshots and stuff and it will uh, ease some of the administrative headache. So if we look at our storage, um, we have the pool that we created earlier. And if we look at our volumes, we should have several volumes on the pool for the Apache container, MariaDB and Nginx. And then there's the image, the, the Buster 10 image that we downloaded. So what we want to do now is create a new volume in the pool. I'm going to call it WordPress and we'll just make it volume two. I think we can do size equal to GB. So if we go back here and list the volumes, we have a WordPress volume. It's not being used by anyone yet. So let's attach the volume to Apache. So WordPress to the Apache container. We're going to call it www because we're that's the device name. I'm going to mount it here. Nice and easy. So if we look inside Apache and do find mount, you'll see that var www.html is this volume that we created. So it's mounted. So let's in the container host go to a temp directory and unpack WordPress. So we can do make temp D and we can just do curl ps wordpress.org latest.zip. Great, let's unzip that. All right, and now we wanna copy this or push it, which is the LXC term into the WordPress directory. So push the current directory into Apache var www.html. You want a recursive push. This might take a couple seconds, but we're nearly done setting up this volume. Check the logs. Okay. And once this is done, the issue with using recursive is that you can't set the GID or UID. So if we look at the Apache HTML directory now, um, we're going to find that the permissions are all wrong. See, 1998. Ah, I should have CD'd to WordPress. So um, there's two ways to fix this. We can. I'm just going to remove the directory and start again. So this time we're going to CD to the WordPress and do the push again. And while we're doing that, Okay, it's done. So actually it's faster than I thought. So if we list again, um, yeah, we have the WordPress directory. So now we'll fix the permissions. Just show you inside WordPress, the permissions all wrong. So Apache, change, own, w the data is a default for Apache, recursive. 
Okay, let's do this. This sets the UID and GID. Okay, so if we list it again, it's set correctly with nice permissions. So there's a few more things we need to do. We didn't install. We need to install all the all the PHP packages to run Apache or to run WordPress. So let's do that now. And I have a list here, which I'll put in the description. So we'll install all those. And so we have two more things to change after this. Um, one is to change the server root to the new WordPress directory we just created. And the second is to add the database to my seat or to MariaDB so WordPress can access it. Okay, so let's um, set the server root. So LXC file edit Apache etc Apache 2 sites available 000 default.config. So document root is now WordPress. And we want to add one more thing here, which is to enable WordPress to set up um, permalinks. So allow override all. And make sure to include the trail in slash. Sometimes I forget. We can te test the syntax by doing Apache to CTL config test. Server name is fine. We're not trying to set this up perfectly. And we want to also enable Rewrite. All right, so let's restart. Apache 2. All right, finally, we want to set up MariaDB. So we'll create a WordPress user, give it access on the only from Apache. So if we do LXC exec MariaDB, MariaDB user root, now we're logged in. We're going to create a database. We're going to call it WordPress. Use a default character set, UTF MB4. I think that's always the default. And the collation, we're going to use this long one, but I think this is also the default as well. What did I do wrong here? UTF8 MB4 Unicode 520CI. Let's get rid of the quotes here. And if you want to use different collations, um, you can just do show collation like UTF-8 and you should see them all here. And we'll do the grant. So grant all on WordPress to, I'm going to use WordPress user as the name at, and this is important, apache.lxd, identified by WordPress pass, and then flush. Okay, so that's set up. And I think everything should be good now. So if we refresh this page, WordPress should launch. And look at that. WordPress is now configured. Let's make sure everything looks good. Database name is WordPress, username is WordPress user. Password is WordPress pass. Database host is mariadb.lxd. Submit. Run. Site title, GIF Slater. GIF, copy this. No, email.tld. Install. And there you have it. WordPress is now installed. Great. So I hope you found this useful. Um, Linux containers have a lot of promise. I think they're very useful for setting up small environments on your laptop or even distributed ones. 
Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover any other topics. And uh, see you later.